Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and this is a quick tip on how to approach vitiligo skin. Vitiligo is a condition where the skin loses pigments in patches and becomes this white, kind of pinkish color, which makes it more apparent on black skin. Even though everybody can get it, and about 1% of the population has it, which, which is a lot. It's about 70 million people, so... I don't know, I feel like representation on screen is an important aspect of, of identity and, and um, self-definition in society. And as people who create visuals on screen, it's cool to know how to cover all sorts of looks and people and um, all that. So yeah, follow me on Instagram at ojang, comment, subscribe, all that. Let's go. So I'm using the same project, same model from uh, the last tutorial on black skin. I just changed a couple things. I uh, changed the lighting a little bit. So I made the top light kind of small and strong kind of in the front of the face. I made the light from the right go more from the back and a bit weaker I made the backlight, I think a bit stronger and that's it. I, uh, I removed all the other lights. Now I also uh, brought down the exposure to about 1.9. And that's the tricky thing about combining black and white skin, getting the lighting and the exposure just right so that one color is not getting underexposed or overexposed. But don't worry if they do a little bit. Now for the skin, I reduced the gamma on the specular a little bit to make it brighter. I increased the coating IOR. So basically the specular is a bit stronger. Now we're going to copy the, that texture. We're going to go to the color correction of the albedo. We're just going to increase the brightness, reduce the hue a little bit, reduce the saturation, and make it just brighter and more contrasty by reducing the gamma and increasing the contrast. Now, one thing about the lighter skin in vitiligo is that it has variations of more pinkish and more whitish tint. So for that, we're going to use the octane noise, and we're going to use the gradient and multiply node. I'm going to combine it with the albedo. And we're going to play around with the noise, with the contrast, move it around a little bit till we find the right positioning we want. And we're going to change the black into a very light pink. And that's going to multiply that pink over the albedo and give us really subtle variations of color. Now, once we did that, we're going to make the specular map a bit brighter by lowering the gamma. We're going to make the roughness map that we have a bit darker so that the specularity on the brighter skin will be a bit sharper. And I'll make the bump a bit less strong. And then in the transmission, I'll make the transmission way brighter because um, lighter skin, lighter albedo tends to get less SSS and less transmission. And in the SSS color, the radius color, I'll make it red. Okay, now let's copy the lips because uh, the lips get affected too sometimes. We're going to again go to the color correction, bring down the hue, may just make it a bit brighter. Now everything remains kind of the same. I'm going to reduce the gamma on the specularity a little bit to make it stronger and reduce the bump here too and maybe make the transmission brighter too. And then also make the SSS radius color red. Cool, so now we're going to create a mixed, a mixed material. We're going to drag both materials in. We're going to drag the mixed material right on the material tags on the model of the ears and the face. And now we're going to mix it. Now we can use a, a noise to mix it. And if we increase the contrast, you can see that it starts to work. The problem is that it gets cut where the selection ends of the face. So that's one way. It's less controllable in the sense of positioning, but you can re reduce and increase the gamma uh, to make it kind of spread out more or less. Another way to do it is to open the albedo map in Photoshop and just paint in, in white where the patches would be and then paint the rest black. Then you drag the image into the mix material and drag it into the mix amount. And that's pretty much it. And you can adjust your mask. And you can use the same mix map for the lips, the eyebrows, the hair, the eye color. Um, sometimes all these get affected too. So yeah, with some post work, this is how it ended up looking. It's just a quick tip. Like I said, um, I think it's just, uh, it's cool to know how to approach these things. And I'm sure people who have vitiligo don't find any comfort in it. But I do think that it's a unique look. It's a look that exists out there. So um, why not know how to make it? So yeah, follow me on Instagram at ojang, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, I want to make more of these kind of quick tips. I think it's a type of videos that um, that's, you know, necessary. So hope you have a good day. Peace.